Importing a text file in Excel is similar to importing a database table. Excel imports three different types of text files. They are PRN, CSV, and TXT files. CSV stands for Comma Separated Variables. In that text file, each record is uh, on a single line and separated by commas, and that's how a program such as Excel would know how to stack the data. PRN stands for Printer Text File. When you go to print, instead of printing to a printer, you can actually print to a file. The idea behind that is you would then be able to take that file to another computer and print it from there. TXT stands for text and is a text file that's usually created in a program such as Notepad or WordPad or other text editors. Any of these three formats can be imported to Excel using the import text. I'm going to start in a blank worksheet. You could start the import in an existing worksheet if you wanted to add your data to the existing worksheet. Then I'm going to go to the tab labeled data and I'm going to go to get external data. This time I'm going to be selecting from text. Then I need to navigate to the location where my data is stored. You'll notice I have two text files here. I have clients.txt that was one of the text types that I could import. And then I have mutualfunds.cvs. And actually, we're going to grab the CVS file, comma, separated variables. I'm going to go ahead and double click on that, and it's going to present me with the text import wizard. During some of the importing in Excel, you'll notice automatically a wizard will come up with steps guiding you through the import process. You'll notice that the wizard has already determined that my text is delimited or separated. I can change that, though, if I knew that that was a fixed width where each field was a different width. I could go ahead and change that. But it is a delimited file, and it is using commas, which we'll get to talk about that on the next step. You can see at the bottom a preview of the data. And you can see that everything's separated by commas. And that's how Excel's going to know where to put the data into the worksheet. I'm going to go ahead and click on Next. Oh, before I do that, you may notice that it says Start Import at Row 1. Well, that is where my data starts. In the original file, my data st may start in a different row. I could adjust that right here in that option. In fact, if I switch it to Row 2, I'm going to be missing the first three rows of very important information. So I'm going to set it back to one. Then I'm going to click on Next. On this screen, I get to tell Excel what delimiter is being used in the file. Now, I can already tell in my preview that it is a comma. There will be some delimited files that are separated by tabs, some that just use a space or a semicolon. And some actually use another character, like a dash or a parenthesis of some sort. And you'll see that down here you have an option for that as well. I'm actually going to click on comma. And immediately I can see in my data preview that that looks like the one that's going to work. If I went to semicolon and took the comma off, you see it doesn't look as nice. I want to be able to quickly import this data into the cells within Excel, and so I want to make sure I get the correct delimiter. It's helpful if you already have an idea what's in the text file, but you can use your preview to help you make these decisions. I'm going to go ahead and click on Next. Now you may decide on this step to change the way Excel is going to read the data. The default is that Excel is going to read all of your text and numbers in the general format. You may remember the general format. That's the default format in Excel. So in this case, the customer number would be treated like a number. Then the title, the first name, the last name, those would all be treated as text. We are going to make some changes here. I'm going to scroll over to the right and examine the zip code. Now, 
in the general format, Excel is going to read that zip code as a number. And you'll notice my first customer here, his zip code starts with a zero. If Excel reads that and imports it as a number, I'm going to lose that leading zero and the zip code is going to be incorrect. It's easy to change the way Excel is going to read that information. I just click on that column and I said I wanted it to be treated as text so I won't lose the leading zero. So I just go up in the upper left hand corner there and I'm going to click on text. If I imported it as general, once I got the data into Excel, I'd be missing that leading zero. And then I'd have to import it again to get the data correct. I'm going to scroll over and see if there's anything else I need to change. Now, Excel will interpret the date of birth, which is DOB here, as a date. So I shouldn't have to do anything to that. If I did want to change the way that it read the date, um, if I wanted it to read the first two digit as the day instead of the month, I can do that from that upper left-hand corner as well. And the rest of the data looks pretty good, but I don't want to include the Social Security number. I don't want to import that. So I'm going to click on the Social Security number column, and I'm going to go to the Options button next to Do Not Import the Column. In other words, it's going to skip it. Okay, everything's looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. If I needed to go back to a previous step, I have a back button down here at the bottom. If I needed to investigate something about the file before I import it, I could also cancel at this point. But I think our data is ready, and I'm going to click on Finish. Then it says, where do you want to put the data? It defaulted to the cell I was already in, which is A1. If I wanted to change that, I could. You'll notice the dollar signs there, just indicating it's an absolute cell reference. If I were to type in another location, I don't have to include the dollar signs. My other option is to put it in a, a new worksheet, and then I'd have to specify which one it was. We're going to put it in this worksheet. I'm going to click on OK, and there's my data. And let's see how it did on the zip code. Oh, perfect. I did not lose any of the leading zeros because I converted it to text. Zip codes really don't need to be treated as numbers. You're not going to perform any arithmetic with that information. My amounts and my dates of birth came in as well. The comma separated information. At every comma, it went to a new cell. At the end of the line, it went to a new row. So each one of my customers is on a different row, and their specific information went into a different cell. From here, I can do whatever I want with the data. It's now part of Excel. So probably I'd want to go and filter the information, and I can do that on the Data tab. I'm just going to click on Filter. You may remember filtering from a previous lesson and perhaps I'm only interested in viewing my customers from New Jersey, I can click on the drop-down arrow in column G. I can take the check off of Select All and then put the check on New Jersey and OK it. I can also sort this data. I'm going to sort it by last name. I'm just going to click in a single cell in the L name column, and I'm going to click on the AZ button. I can clear the filter to view all of it. And of course, when I save my worksheet, now this is part of Excel. It still exists in its original file, but we have placed a copy of it into Excel. So I'm just going to go ahead and save this. And I'm going to call it Imported Customer List. It's a simple procedure to import text files. You do have to know where the file is stored and make sure that you actually have access to that file that it's not protected. And that's how easy it is to import text 